My name is John Wayne Mercure, the sonneteer, the sensei, the teacher. I'm talking to you from Chandler, Arizona. Come and visit us sometime. It's beautiful here. You'd like it. No snow. And I lived in a place where there was snow. It's beautiful. But try no snow. You'd like it. The Society of Living Poets, you're a member if you want to be. There's a poem in your heart. I'm sure there is. Today, I'm talking about a movie that, it's an old movie, it's black and white. It's a great movie, or I wouldn't be talking about it. The book is great too. The name of this sonnet, 393, The Oxbow Incident, Lynch Mob Insanity. Henry Fonda was the star. 1943 is a long time ago, but that's when this black and white movie was made, and it's terrific. Some of the oldest movies are the best. For example, Gone with the Wind, 1939. For example, Stagecoach, 1939. This movie, The Oxbow Incident, terrific. It's about a lynching. They lynch these three guys and they're innocent. Innocent, they didn't do anything. And they beg, but it doesn't do any... The mob mentality, they hang them anyway. In 1885, cattle rustling and horse rustling was a hanging offense, even of the innocent. Alive one minute, accused, mob convicted, hanging so violent, gagging, choking, faces turning purple, eyes bloody and bulging. Hanging because a savage mob cannot wait for legal accounting in court. Justice delayed is justice denied. The angry mob screams aloud. They can't wait. Icy hearts, wild eyes, rage exploding from this rabid crowd. Kill them now. Taste of bloody revenge. Fiendish joy unleashed. Thrill of watching someone helplessly dangle by their neck. Justice is crushed. Walter Van Tilburg Clark, he wrote this book, The Oxbow Incident. He knew well the insanity of angry mobs. Murderous parties swept up by thugs, ignoring pleading sobs. Hang them high. Watch them turn purple, kicking, thrashing, hanging rope, digging into quivering flesh, slowly suffocating. A man with a family, a father begging for mercy, he was beaten, he was mocked, tied up, bound like a pig. Planned vengeance wreaked on three innocent men. No mercy anywhere to be found. Find out after the grisly lynchings that they were not guilty. Blinding ferocity of this mob, unreasoning monsters. Insane mobs can be that way. The man, the father, writes a letter to his wife. She's now alone because he's lynched, alone with babies. Damning guilty consciences, all these people that hanged these three innocent, they voted to murder them, to kill the innocent. Man cannot ever take the law into his own hands as executioner. Damn shameful mob of thugs, hideous throng of evil slayers. Law is a sacred thing, evolving down from the law of the jungle. Awe of sacredness of one human life, too precious to bungle the value of a single human life. The still small voice within each of us warns us, good versus evil. Will we listen or will we choose counsel from the devil? Our consciences convict us and slay us with gnawing, nagging guilt. Hours of regret plague us to our graves. Peace of mind is killed. We're haunted by what we did. We cannot kill, knowing that our silent voice screams at us out loud. See the voice of God in that silent voice, a condemning shroud. We cannot break the law without hurting everyone who ever lived. The very conscience of the humanity is law. Civilization is our survival. Be certain in your soul. 
good against evil, God against devils. John Wayne McCure, The Sonneteer, copyright February the 3rd, 2008. This man pleading with them, please, please, my, my wife is alone with babies. I didn't do this. I didn't do this. He wrote a letter. At the end of the movie, Henry Fonda is telling Harry Morgan, his partner, you should read this letter. It's a nice touch. Harry Morgan says, you know I can't read. In those days, lots of people couldn't read. So he reads the letter aloud in the saloon, and all these guys that did it are there, and they're all sad because they murdered three innocent men and watched them die begging for mercy. And this is the letter. It's a great letter from the father, Donald Martin. My dear wife, Mr. Davies will tell you what's happening here tonight. He's a good man and has done everything he can for me. I suppose there are some other good men here too, only they don't seem to realize what they're doing. They're the ones I feel sorry for, because it'll be over for me in a little while, but they'll have to go on remembering for the rest of their lives. A man just naturally can't take the law into his own hands and hang people without hurting everybody in the world. Because then he's just breaking one law, not just one law, but all laws. Law is a lot more than words you put in a book or judges or lawyers or sheriffs you hire to carry it out. It's everything people ever have found out about justice and what's right and wrong. It's the very conscience of humanity. There can't be any such thing as civilization unless people have a conscience. Because if people touch God anywhere, where is it except through their conscience? And what is anybody's conscience except a little piece of the conscience that all men had that have ever lived? I guess that's all I have to say except kiss the babies for me and God bless you, your husband Donald. They hung him anyway. What I'm trying to tell you is Clint Eastwood has a movie called Hang Em High. Very similar. He says, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. They hang him anyway. It's an excellent movie. Hang Em High. Clint Eastwood. What I'm saying is, the law, you can't take the law in your own hands. I see these kids in these universities breaking windows and burning things and they won't let people talk. What? You can't do that. Free speech is for everybody. Voltaire said this. Francois Ouellette. Voltaire. He said, I don't like what you're saying. But I will defend to the death your right to say it. In a republic, everybody has a chance to speak. And these people now say, no, no, we don't like what you're saying, so shut up. We're going to riot. You can't do that. That's Saul Alinsky devils that are doing that. And I'm reading this about the Oxbow incident. Check the movie out. Check the book out. I think you'd really be impressed. I don't care if it's old. It's fabulous. It's one of Henry Fonda's best. This sonnet, number 446, High School Blues. Most of us in high school, <laughs> for most of us in high school, high school is a time of glory or shame. Most of us remember times of shame. Humiliation is the game. Older, popular kids in clique gangs bullying younger students. Bolder delinquents skilled in hunningly vicious devilments, making life a living hell for the weak, unpopular unfortunates, breaking spirits of defenseless victims, brutalizing classmates, merciless teasing, making fun of any old imagined deficiencies, heartless mockery, bullies, social ostracism, unbelievable cruelties, high school, <laughs> Catch the victims in the restroom where there is only one door. They can't get away. Mash their faces into the wall. Teachers never knew the score. Get perverted self-esteem over degradation of targeting others. Let fear rule the day. Principals seldom ever leave their offices sitting on their fat butts. Blaming the teachers for everything. Students dropping out in droves. Schools far too large to even care. Confrontations after school, away from school, wimps beware, we'll catch you later. Date rape, 
thuggish boys, gangland attitudes, sleazy girl sluts, hatred for schoolwork, teachers threatened, brazen culprits. Run pants up the flagpole, beat up kids for their lunch money. Fun for school fiends means chaos for education. It's not so funny. Illegal drugs are rampant, intoxicated students, stony, glazed eyes. Damsels, girls, leave home. They change as soon as they leave home to skimpy clothing, naked thighs. Apply heavy makeup later, flaunting the most obscene thongs. Mm -hmm. Cry in hysterical shrieks when raped. The hooker look is just all wrong. <laughs> Very little learning going on. National dropout rate, a national disgrace. Plenty of principals think high absenteeism, they're not there. They're no trouble. Don't give chase, don't give a damn. America has to compete in a world technologically flat. The technology in this world now is for everybody and everybody's hungry. America has to compete. Outlaw students and monster parents are a cancer of illiteracy. The age of satellites, computers, cell phones, the world wide web, the internet, a stage for economic collapse for America if we're not careful. We, can we compete? Maybe not. Maybe our nation is dead because the schools are dead. Drugs, sex, rock and roll, computer games, ruinous welfare roles. The ugly fate of America Dropouts guarantee our nation's death knell. See, laziness and complacency send Americans straight to hell. John Wayne Mercure, The Sonneteer, copyright April the 7th, 2008. I think those of you out there, you know what high school's like. You know the schools where no learning happens because everybody is afraid. There has to be discipline and there isn't any. And the principal sit there and, 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 and threaten the teachers, we're going to write you up. It's your fault. They don't even get off their butts. And the superintendents don't care either. Don't make waves. Don't make waves. Don't tell anybody how bad it is. Just because nobody can read and everybody's dropping out, we got to stop it. This sonnet, number 710. 244 calls for police in one year at a high school. I know this high school. It's true. Chaos at a high school, small town nightmare, pandemonium, impossible to learn, assaults, gangs, danger for everyone, drugs everywhere, students, they're stoned out of their minds in class, eyes glassily dead, ugly atmosphere, no one is safe, rapes, a high school to dread, teachers blame for everything, write them up. Fire them now. I heard a superintendent saying, I'm going to replace you just like I'd replace a light bulb. You're nothing to me. I'll hire somebody else at a cheaper salary. Each incident glossed over. Don't rat. The hoodlums do howl. Keep things quiet. Don't make waves. Cowardly superintendents and principals. A steep price to pay for negative publicity. We don't want anybody saying bad things about our school, so don't tell them the truth. Their careers might descend. Bathrooms unsafe. One door, one way out. Swarming gang assaults. A tomb for learning, a graveyard, everyone in fear. It's the administration's fault. It's the school board's fault. The school boards don't know what's going on. The meek. The defenseless, the timid, exile forever to doom. They can't get an education. Seeking non-existent protection. Beatings, a climate of gloom. We'll get you after. Violence boiling over to adjacent parks. Hell for the student body. Teachers cowering. Gangs of sharks. Everything is fine. Smooth the troubled waters. Deny everything. Don't admit it. Admitting the truth? No, we can't do that. Violent disorder does reign. The truth stings. The United States, think of this. 25th in the world in math. Can we survive like that? 15th in reading. The blighted climate for productive learning. Our knowledge is plummeting. Filthy graffiti all over. 
extortion of students, dirty, rotten language, noisy classrooms, complete anarchy, a public school outrage, dances, dangerous, parking lot assaults, plagues of vandalism, trances of comatose druggies, stupors of youthful alcoholism, tires slashed, gas tanks full of sugar and urine, bullies rule, dire emergencies and urgencies unaddressed, a real blackboard jungle school, girl gang fights, halls terrorized by thugs, negligent parents, mm. swirling quagmire of student unrest, quicksand of violence, tax money, thrown down a rat hole, wasted dollars, lost progress, acts of destruction, severing futures, catastrophic distress. Call police 244 times, get a cop on campus. Don't give these kids a criminal record. The principals and the counselors are supposed to deal with this through the parents, through the students. And they say, oh, a, a, a criminal record that, that they get from a police officer in school, that's going to be expunged. Hey, it's out there in cyberspace. Don't tell me it's expunged because it's not. And it's going to be with them and you're letting it happen. Let the police do your job. Bunch of damn cowards. All the sewer lawyers, lawyers cry foul. Defending thugs. Attorney bastards. They like it that way. They can defend thugs and get a fee. The fall of America, doomed for us all. Anarchy is the curse word. That's what they want. They don't want any rules at all. John Wayne Mercure, The Sonneteer, copyright May the 24th, 2009. There's a movie, it's called The Emperor's Club. It's with uh, Kevin Klein. It's a good movie. But there's one student in his class that destroys everything and that's all it takes is one student one animal that won't let anybody learn that thinks he has to be the center of attention whether anybody learns anything or not that guy that played that kid in that classroom i can't stand to look at him he convinced me he's really like that it was a good movie the emperor's club but that's the way it is in class it just takes one rotten apple to destroy it for everybody and the teachers won't do anything and the, the principals won't let them the principals will fire them. There's a TV commercial where this is lady. She says, I can't wait for my vacation. And there's holy hell going on behind her. She's not going to have a vacation except a permanent one because they'll fire her for that. They'll say, hey, you can't control your class. What's wrong with you? What's the matter with you? You're fired. We wrote you up. They won't even do that. There's so much chaos in the schools. The United mm -hmm. States is going to collapse because of it unless we as parents... Where are the fathers? I don't get it. Where are the fathers out there that abandon their children and won't help their children and support their children and support the schools that things are right in there? Where are the PTAs? Good questions, huh? John Wayne Mercure, the Sonneteer, write about your schools. God bless us, everyone.